Last year, it would rain. They would open the floodgates and just wash everybody out. Holly, my niece, she's quadriplegic. Well, she can't move. So the fire department was up here and they was helping somebody. They got a call to help somebody come up the hill or whatever. And I was down there and I asked them, I said, hey, look, can you guys come and help me with my niece? She's quadriplegic and we're trying to get her up, you know, up the hill. They looked at me and they said, no, we're not here on that call. Well, the people that they were here for were down at the end of the hill yelling, no, go help her. Her niece needs help. Go help her. They got back in their trucks and they drove off and left her down there in the waters. When the waters came up to her bed, it just it makes me mad that the people that are there to help you because you're homeless, they're like, they just shun you. The county and the city and state, they kept coming out, making us a bunch of promises, telling us they were gonna bring us out bathrooms, they were gonna make this a safe zone for us so we could be here without being bothered. And then they didn't come through with anything. They came through and swept us. They did a violent sweep. It was violent. And uh, Camp Resolution was a vision that um, Sharon Jones and, and Joyce Jones had about getting my niece housing. So this Camp Resolution, currently we have been supplied with 34 trailers from the city. They had put them in storage for two years. They were to provide uh, safety and shelter for those experiencing homelessness during the pandemic, but again, we're, were put into storage. It's five weeks ago, this was tents all over, cars parked everywhere, um, and just people holding ground. We've been here for 251 days, and in that process, we have combated a major sweep that they were trying to do here, and then we ultimately, with legal representation, were able to gain a lease here. Camp Resolution is in many respects, an unprecedented accomplishment on the part of the homeless, the organized homeless, including our homeless union. It is the first and to our understanding, the only instance anywhere in the United States where an encampment has been officially recognized by the local political administration. Camp Resolution is a self-governed, self-managed community of homeless people. Everybody keeps asking why it's so special. I think it's special because we all stood up for ourselves. We've gotten this far with the support of our community. And they had determined that they were through being chased from one part of town to the other, being swept from one street corner to the other, being shoved into and then out of one shelter after the other, one slum hotel room, one after the other. They're being swept everywhere. This is the only place in Sacramento that's not being swept. But we're still protesting, even though we've got this far, we've accomplished this much, we're still protesting for the others that are not as fortunate as us. They're doing about four sweeps a day, massive sweeps, and they're taking people's RVs from families due to expired registration. They have children in them and placing them into a tent. This is what we call a state-created danger. They're making the situation more harmful for these individuals. They're just taking their belongings and taking them to the dumpster. It's horrific what's happening here. You know, like if you had your house and, and somebody came in and robbed you, you feel like somebody invaded your space. Well, that's, how, that's how we feel. That's how homeless people feel. And they finally came here because this location had originally been designated by the city of Sacramento as a uh, part of what they call the master siding plan, where they were gonna set up certain uh, sanctioned areas where mobile home or trailers and cars, and in some cases, tents could be established. The fact of the matter is that we think we've established uh, uh, something uh, of great value and hopefully will be a model as we go forward in, in struggle and in reaching some kind of agreement with these cities and counties such that we can get away from this constant guerrilla war and get to the business of actually providing housing. California Constitution says that uh, we have an inalienable right to life, liberty, pursuit of happiness, and safety, okay? And, and that Constitution says not just that to pursue safety, but to obtain safety. And our understanding, our legal interpretation is that those therefore are rights and that the government has an affirmative obligation because you can't be safe if you're homeless. You can't be safe if you're on the street. You know, I know I have somewhere I'm safe at. I don't have to be driving around and parking everywhere and, and hoping that cops don't come or hoping nobody else comes and messes with me. Or... It gave me a reason to fight for being indoors. Come here, it gave me myself, a little bit of my self-esteem back. What has made me feel better is, number one, I feel safe. I sleep comfortable and my husband works, so when he works, he could be comfortable leaving me here by myself, you know, at my motorhome or around in the camp. Most definitely, it's, I feel safer, you know. That was one of the main reasons why I was asked to come was because I was, it was just me and my dog and I'm staying in my car under the bridge. My mom was homeless, my grandmother's homeless. What does it feel like? I don't live like, you know, someone a bum or, you know, I, I work. It's also traumatizing too in the same time, you know? Things that, you know, dealing with the elements every all day, every day, trying to do something positive with yourself in the same time, it's, it, it gets hard. But for me, it's all I really ever know. It's hard. 
Um, I work, I work a lot. And it's, it's just hard. I didn't ask to be homeless. I'm sorry. I had a place to live and I had three jobs and I gave up my jobs and my place to live to go take care of my mom who was sick. I quit everything to go take care of her before she died. Then when she did pass, my brother got everything and I got kicked out. And here I am. This is my home now. It's not much of a home, but it's a home. Our hope is that we can get a matrix here and that this will stay sustaining as a trailer park and that we can continue to transition people in and transition people out because this is the only space where services can come, know where the people are, and that is guaranteed housing. We're tired of just filtering through this system that recycles people in and out of these shelters. And they are here for housing. This is a staging ground to continue the battle to organize the homeless and to actually get housing. The city cannot take this camp down they cannot clear this encampment until everyone in the camp has been provided with individual, durable, and permanent housing. The residents of this camp have legal standing to enforce that agreement. They have rights here. They have rights to go to court and enforce terms of the uh, lease agreement. We are determined to force the city, the county, the state, all levels of government to actually provide the housing that we think everybody deserves. We're waiting for them to get this part paved. That way we can get our trailers. Or even, even before that, we're trying to get the trailers over here for people who sleep in the cars and everything. But this is my motorhome right here. That's my husband. But yeah, this is my, this is my sanctuary. <laughs> my rent was 500 and then um, when he seen that I had a pit bull, he started charging me $700 extra every month for my, uh, for my, for my deposit for my dog. So me and my husband became homeless. We've been homeless for the last nine years. I just got elected into the council not even a week ago. So I'm like, um, you know, trying to, to find out where we're at, try to get on board with everybody else. We hear what they have to say, and then we bring it into, you know, a vote. And, you know, we, we, we vote, you know, to the best abilities that we can. If we can't come to a vote, we'll, we'll, we'll sit back and we'll think about it. And then, you know, we'll come to an agreement or we'll come to Crystal. So I think there's a difference between sanctioned camps and self-governed. The billions of dollars that are coming down for homelessness are being funneled into the homeless industrial complex. You know, they're creating these areas with tents and they are, you know, bringing people in two meals a day, $4,000 per head per month. For that, we could actually be housing people. We could be paying for services. This is different. This is not funded by the government. We are showing here that the community can do this because we've created our own network. So we have the medical teams, we have meal services, um, people bring in donations, bring in water. If we're getting this done with no funding, there's no excuse. There is no excuse for homelessness, not with the wealth, not with the technology, uh, not with the resources that are there. And a priority in the minds of uh, all of the campers here was getting housing for Holly Porter. Her circumstances, her particular disability was such that she could not be in one of these trailers. The agreement was that either the city would obtain resources to house Holly within 45 days and her mother, who's also her caregiver. 45 days came and went, and so we've been kind of battling with the city over whose responsibility is it now to seek to it that she's housed. Even as we sit here today, we're well past 45 days. She's still not actually housed, but about two weeks ago, we decided to put her into a hotel. We had some uh, extreme heat days. It posed an immediate risk to Holly's uh, health and safety. And so yes, these are nice, but this is not housing. Imagine sitting in a 180 degree trailer, no water, no food, no hygiene. It's still the same situation. They have so many days to get her housing and they have it. Now, if you can't house one woman who's quadriplegic, how are you gonna house any of us? That's one person. You can't house that one person how are you going to house any of us? Get out of here with that. That just, that's crazy. That's crazy. It's negligence. We all want a place to live. We all want a place to be home. I'd love to have a, another place to live where I can pay my rent and, and be, be myself and do my own living. So would Holly. So would everybody else that's out here. Do what you're supposed to do. Do what you say you're going to do. You can't house one quadriplegic person. How are you going to house 20,000 other people? We're seeing uh, people with vouchers for years and years can't get into housing. Um, and so there needs to be some accountability and some transparency on this. I've been here um, maybe about a month after this opened up here. 
But I've been in this area in camping with Joyce and Sharon and everyone else, Don and I, for about the last 10 years. Do I love to cook. It's like a release. Have fun with it. You can't use their, their appliances or whatnot, you know what I mean? Isn't that I don't, kind of strange? That's real strange. All right, I got about two minutes. I gotta go to work. <laughs> I've been homeless uh, seven years and I've been in a tent for all but a month ago. They gave us these nice little boxes but we can't use anything in them. And so it was kind of easier in a tent. We have microwave, we have air conditioners, we have a TV, um, refrigerator, showers and bathrooms are in here. We can't use those though, we're told not to. These are all things that unhoused folks need and want, but you give us this with no power. And so it doesn't do us a lot of good. We're here trying to protest not only for the unhoused folks, but for our environment. So our goal is to get the second trailer, continue to run fans and power, which is all we can run off these trailers. We can't actually run a trailer off the solar things. And our hope is to embarrass Sacramento. Again, the capital of the fourth largest economy in the world. They can't even provide basic infrastructure, water, power. They're leaving it to unhoused folks to figure out. We can get out of this situation. We have smart people here that have ideas that can work for us. I want to say thank you to Sharon and Joyce, um, Crystal, all the other people that have helped us be safe here. Um, Anthony, our attorney, thank you. Um, without y'all, we wouldn't be here. We wouldn't have what we have. You know, and I mean, if anybody else has to say that, I want to say thank you. Camp Resolution makes it easier because it gives me some sort of sense of peace because I know that I'm doing all that I can to make my situation better. It didn't look like this when we first started this. You know, people were intense. It gives me hope that, you know, maybe that with a little bit of dedication and a little bit of support, you'd be amazed what people could do. We're not all criminals, drug addicts, and all that stuff. Like, you gotta judge people by the mind and heart, not by what you think you know about them. I think that if people would like to know about Camp Resolution, all you gotta do is come down here, come hang out with us. I can guarantee that you'll wanna come back and hang out with us again. I haven't really met anyone who hasn't. Camp Resolution shows us that we can do this as a community, that we can do this as unhoused people without spending millions and millions of dollars. If we can do this as a group of 61 people who are unhoused and organized, we could do this across the nation by listening to impacted voices, bringing them to the table, not to tokenize their voices, but to actually allow them to organize spaces like Camp Resolution. And we could actually get people stabilized. We don't want homelessness, but the only way to solve homelessness is to actually come up with a solution, not just talk about it and shuffle people in circles. Allow self-governed spaces. Get in here and organize with folks. Listen to them. They, they have the answers and the solutions that you're seeking.